Now, with the exception of one man in this group, everybody has been with me at least twice. And uh, so they're very aware that uh, what an inner hire could do is scripturally based. It has nothing to do with religion, not a thing or any denomination in whatever religion you may be, be it Christian, Muslim, or whatnot. And, uh, uh, but uh, we take the good book and we've learned certain things from this good book. My training has been 41 years before I was allowed to hang out the shingle, in a sense, before I was invited into the inner Hyoka. And, uh, but uh, I will proceed in explaining what an inner hyoka is and, uh, I, you know, to lay a foundation. Uh, many, many years ago, Christ actually walked this turtle in North America. And I'm not Mormon. I've never been to a Mormon church. I detest any, any religion. And uh, I'm not too happy with the Mormon way of uh, how they've come in, proselytized, and entrapped my people. As you can see, I look white, but I'm a breed, and and there's a lot of blood in me that uh, says Indian, and uh, so I have problems with the Mormon faith and the Catholic faith. But uh, it boils down to any faith other than the purity of the Indian way, and purity is what Inner Hyoka learned. Tradition, the traditional way of our, our full blood brothers and sisters, is not purity. It's a break off, break off of purity. And I'll go on to explain that. First off, Christ came before he died. Is a way that, well, in in my training, now let me regress a little bit. In my training. We are taught to do time travel. And as you are being prepared for the inner Hyoka, you're told to go back in time and see where the inner Hyoka started. That's it, period. Not a thing more about it, just do it. And all of us, there's 12 total worldwide, um, have... Uh, uh, gone back and seen identical. And this has gone on since since Christ left. And uh, of course the first 13, not 12, the first 13 that were with Christ during his travels throughout North America and South America uh, knew, knew this. They didn't have to time travel, they were there. And uh, But as one would die or being prepared to die. Another one was being raised up and trained. And uh, that one, that first replacement, if you want, and every replacement thereafter had to time travel to find out what was going on. And uh, what happened is Christ came to what is we call the United States now on one of his uncle's ships. His uncle, he had two uncles that were very, very uh, well, rich and uh, uh, businessmen, and one had a fleet of ships, selling ships, uh, quite big, big things, uh, 200 feet or better. And uh, uh, they would, uh, the other one took care of the business end in a sense of the paperwork and of the, of the, the thing, and they worked hand in hand, although their businesses were separate. Uh, they were involved with each other in each other's particular business. But uh, Jesus, as a much younger man than when he died, now I know others have said that he came back after. I'm just telling you what I see. And don't believe me? You'll learn time travel and you go back and check on it yourself. But uh, anyway, he came when he was in his 20s over here on one of his uncle's ship, and, and they came up uh, towards what is now the St. Lawrence Seaway. And naturally, they couldn't go beyond that with these big ships. 
at that time. And uh, canoes would meet them, and Indians would meet them, and and uh, take their goods. It was a, it was a trade trade deal, and uh, take uh, take the people that had to go further upstream into Lake Michigan and stuff, and uh, they would deliver the goods to to various uh, places, various villages as they went and arrive where they were going pretty much empty except for the foods and stuff that they were going to use. And Jesus was in one of these canoes. And uh, then they would, uh, the, the Indians would start loading um, copper, a lot of copper. There was some gold, but mostly copper, and there was some silver over these very, very many trips that were uh, where the two continents in a sense met. But Jesus came to learn what we remembered, the, all the people of North and South America. He was on a quest to learn and a quest to teach. Despite what is not said in the Holy Book, he went a lot of places. He went to Tibet, India. I, I, he went all over, and his mother was an Essene. And a lot of the money that the, the three kings left with him, you know, mirth and all that good stuff, uh, went to the training of Jesus in the ways of the Essene, which is a very, very spiritual and very powerful in the sense of in spirit of, uh, of the uh, Hebrew faith, Hebrew way. And uh, he was sent off there by mama and uh, by the way, she didn't tell him how how he came into being. As far as he knew, Joseph, his his stepfather, as far as he knew, was his father. And uh, anyway, he went all over learning, learning from the wise people, and and uh, trying to find out all he can about this living father of the the Jewish race. And he started that quest to know his father, the Bible talks about. Well, understand this. It was not to know the father that created his birth. And it was a holy birth. But to know the father that his Hebrew race uh, called the father of all things, God. They called him father. And yet... Here Christ was born in a time when the Hebrew race was not free. They were under Roman rule. And uh, it had been over 200 years. And sometime during that, towards the end of that 200 years, Christ was uh, uh, born. And here's these people at his so-called, what we call church, the synagogues of the day, uh, you know, he he was being taught the first five books of the Bible, the Torah, I believe it's called, and uh, learning that, and everybody was talking that, and that this father of their race was the top gun god of all races. And yet he was looking around him and seeing that Wait a minute, wait a minute. If, you know, you're telling me Moses is part of the sea and I can walk a few days and go to Moses' grave. I, I'm not sure if he could, but I don't even know where Moses is buried. But all these spiritual helpers during that, you know, prior to Christ, uh, there was a number of places that he could actually go to the grave site or the site that this event took place or that event took place. And they had all this down in their history of the Torah. And yet they're under control by a foreign government. And frankly, he wanted to find out if this father of their race, the Hebrew race, was the real God or if it was a bunch of buffalo chips, period. Yes. And um, <coughs> there is a formula in the Bible that anybody who reads a good book and has read it at least through once, at least once, doesn't matter. 
if you read it all, you have read the formula that if you follow this formula, now it's a simple formula, and you read it, if you follow this formula, you too can do the things of Christ. And it's that simple. But you read it all the time and you think you know what you're reading, but uh, you see yet are blind, you hear yet are deaf. And the Christian world says that to the non-Christian world, and believe me, they're as deaf and blind as those are saying it to. They just don't see the hidden, right in the open, things that the Bible talks about. And by my understanding in this short visit, uh, the Book of Mormon, and boy, I hate that word. Uh, I'm with one called Dick Bellman and his wife, and uh, he is a former Mormon, and he realized that this so-called Book of Mormon was uh, filled with knowledge that, like I say, that the Bible is. Uh, you read it, and yet you're not seeing it. And he dropped out, and he is found this knowledge and it doesn't make you a Mormon to know this knowledge. And uh, I'm looking deeper into it and believe me, I'll never be a Mormon, period. I'll never be a Catholic, period. I'll never be a Muslim, period. I won't be any religion, period. And the inner Hayoka is not a religion. It is the way, the way of purity, the way of being able to do what I went out there in the prayer time, to see an angel and to, to see Christ and to feel the, the very presence of the Father or in, in, in that case, in many cases, the overpowering presence of the Holy Spirit, the Great Spirit. And, uh, but it's not a religion. It's just the way. And... Uh, well, Christ came, and in the, the time he came to learn what our people knew on the South American and North American continent, what they retained from the knowledge that all had at one time in the day of Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve walked with Christ, or God, in the garden and then got kicked out and they were never able to walk with him again. But they sure did learn how to pray and talk. And they taught their children. And eventually over a period of time, those children kind of, you know, it came more like myth. And uh, they started slipping bad. You know, they were not connecting. And if you don't believe that, then why is it only certain people of their particular race uh, were godly prophets, but only one or two or three maybe at one time, considering you had a whole group of people. So that whole group of people had really slid. But at one time, the original time of Adam and Eve, you could walk with the Great One, the greatest of the great. And uh, Christ was learning how many people retained a little bit of that knowledge and that oneness with with dad the great creator and what they lacked knowing he taught and he would learn from them and medicine people back then and long before then were not men they were women and uh, uh, they knew the plants real well and they would make the concoctions and stuff and in time, a little boy might come up and say, what you doing, Annie? And she would show him. And, and that grew into man taking over and becoming the medicine man and putting women down. They inadvertently gave it to man. And to this day, man rules in, in the Indian medicine way. But it's originally, it was a woman that ruled, if you want. And uh, balance is coming back. Uh, the women are coming forward and those that uh, feel they should come forward, that feeling is very true. But it, it, uh, I find that in the Indian world that the women that are, are starting to come back 
Uh, it's a pendulum swinging, and the men have held it on their side of the wall. 